Now, let's turn our focus to preference shares. In a way, preference shares have features of both common stock and debt. Like debt, preferred shares do not have voting rights and typically make fixed periodic payments to investors. And as with common stock, the shares usually do not mature, can have put or call features and the dividends are not a contractual obligation. So how does this work? Dividends are usually fixed and periodic, like debt, but not actually a contractual obligation. Preferred shares have a stated par value and pay a percentage dividend based on the par value of the shares. For example, a $100 par value preferred share with a 6% dividend pays a dividend of $6 per year. However, such dividends are not an obligation. Contractually, the firm is only to ensure that preferred stock dividends have priority over common stock dividends. That is, the 6% dividend must be paid to the preferred stockholders before the company can declare any dividends to common stocks for the year. Even so, some companies may have difficulty paying the preferred dividends for the year. For example, the firm may not have enough to pay the preferred dividend in the third year. If the preference shares are non-cumulative, the preferred stockholders have no recourse but to accept lesser or no dividends for that year, and the shortfall will not be repaid in future. So if the company only paid $1 preferred dividend for that year, the shareholder cannot expect the shortfall of $5 to be paid in the future. However, if it is cumulative preference shares, any shortfall is accumulated and the company has to make up for it in the future when it is able to do so. So in this case, the $5 shortfall is accumulated to the next year. The preferred stockholder can expect $11 dividend per share next year. That is, if the company has the means to pay. Preference shares can also be participating or non-participating. Non-participating preference shares have fixed dividends and the claim in the event of liquidation is equal to the par value. Participating preference shares receive extra dividends if the firm profits exceed a predetermined level and may receive a value greater than the par value if the firm is liquidated. As you can observe, participating preference shares allow investors to participate in the potential upside of the firm. Smaller and riskier firms often issue such securities to make their offering more compelling to investors. And lastly, some preference shares have a convertibility option. This allows preferred stockholders to exchange their shares for common shares at a conversion ratio determined when the shares are originally issued. Such shares have the following advantages. Firstly, the preferred dividend is higher than a common dividend. If the firm is profitable, the investor can share in the profits by converting his shares into common stock. Thirdly, when the common stock price increases, the conversion option becomes more valuable. And fourth, Preferred shares are less risky than common shares because the dividend is stable and they have seniority over common stock in the event of liquidation. Because of their upside potential, convertible preferred shares are often issued by risky venture capital and private equity firms. Investors prefer this to limit risk exposure when the firm is not profitable yet and to participate in the upside when the firm turns profitable. And that concludes this lesson, where we've learnt the various types of equity investments. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.